Coming up, despite a delay and a pandemic, the turnout could be record breaking for today's primary election. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYNT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Secretary of State Michael Adams says about 1.1 million Kentuckians voted in Kentucky's delayed primary election. You can see next to me video from Louisville's one polling location earlier tonight. It's the largest turnout in Kentucky, it appears, since 2008. As expected, President Donald Trump and Joe Biden won the presidential primaries, but many other outcomes might not be known for one week until counties submit all the vote totals. Now, the most watched race is for the Democratic nomination for U.S. Senate. Amy McGrath and Charles Booker are the top candidates tonight, vying to take on incumbent Republican Mitch McConnell, who easily won his primary. Partial results show McGrath with about a 5,000 vote lead, but that does not include Fayette or Jefferson counties. McGrath and Booker spent their election nights in very different ways. Garrett Weimer begins our coverage. We're told the Booker and McGrath campaigns filed injunctions to keep polls in Louisville open longer. A line of voters outside the Expo Center not happy they couldn't get in after being stuck in traffic. A judge denied an injunction to keep polls open until 9, but decided the doors could open back up for an extra half hour. It was enough to let folks already there cast their ballots. We are redefining the course of our country. The entire country is watching us right now. They're looking at Kentucky. Hat over. At his thank you rally in Louisville, Charles Booker was joined by his family and introduced by his mother as he thanked loved ones and supporters in an emotional speech. We are here for a reason, and this is not about politics. We got work to do, Kentucky, and we're going to win. We're going to win. In fact, we've already won. This is our time now, and Mitch got to go. Amy McGrath did not hold an in-person election night rally. We were told she'd have a Zoom call with reporters at some point. That hasn't happened yet. She did release a statement. As eager as we all are to get results, I am grateful for the extra effort and due diligence to make sure every voice is heard and every vote is counted. Right now, I want to thank every single person who has supported us along the way. As we wait for results, I hope everyone takes a moment to get a little rest, recharge your battery, and buckle up for what's next. The mission to defeat Mitch McConnell and defend our democracy goes on. Uh, Outside Kroger Field, Mike Breuer held a small get-together with staff and volunteers. He spoke with us about folks' demand for social and economic justice. People in Washington need to be paying attention or they're going to be extinct because people in this country are ready for change. And I hope that whoever wins this race, whether it's me or, or Representative Booker or Colonel McGrath, that we take forward this message that, that to rush back to, to business as usual, you know, pre-COVID, you know, it, it, this is not what America wants. They want big changes, and I hope that whoever wins this race has got the courage to make bold changes. That was Garrett Weimer reporting, so it's still a close race between McGrath and Booker. We will likely not know the outcome until next Tuesday. Whoever wins will have to face off against one of the most influential men in Washington. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell was first elected back in 1984 and has won re-election five times since then. Congressman Hal Rogers won Kentucky's 5th Congressional District Republican primary today. Rogers is seeking his 21st term in office in November. He released a statement tonight saying in part, it's an honor to have the overwhelming confidence of the people of Southern and Eastern Kentucky. Over the last four decades, we have built strong partnerships and generated historic grassroots movements to impact the drug abuse epidemic, rebuild our economy in coal country, expand our infrastructure, create jobs, clean up our region, and pave a bright, brighter path for future generations. Congressman Andy Barr, Thomas Massey, and Brett Guthrie also won their primary races tonight. Well, most counties just had one or two polling places today, but in Pike County, voters were able to choose from six in-person precincts. Belfry, Phelps, East Ridge, Shelby Valley, and Pike Central High Schools were all open to voters, as was Millard School. Poll worker Richard Tucker says using the schools as precincts in place of the usual spots provided more help for poll workers 
making a smoother process for voters. So people get to get in to vote easier and it's not working like four people to death. It, it seems to be a whole lot easier. We was all talking, we like this setup. It's a whole lot better on us. Kentucky Secretary of State Michael Adams says Kentucky's election has been, quote, a national success story. For decades, the city of Middlesbrough has not allowed alcohol to be sold in the city, and today it was up to the people to decide if they want their city to be wet. People who live in Middlesbrough simply voted yes or no. WIMT's Emily Bennett talked to many voters who have strong opinions on the issue. A simple yes or no to choose if the city of Middlesbrough will allow alcohol sales. But for voters, the decision is not that easy. And I think Middlesbrough could use the revenue from it. But uh, if I had my wish, there wouldn't, it wouldn't go wet. Juanita Harrell is against the sale, as people in her family have had problems with alcohol. Alcohol is a, a root of all evil. <laughs> it just uh, tears families apart. Cookie Long has the same opinion, thinking back to the 50s when the town was wet. And I can remember some of the things that went on, so, and it didn't leave a good taste in my mouth, so, no. Revenue from the sales helped fund the police department. I would rather pay some other kind of taxes to go to them as to that. And while some want to find another source of revenue, others want to keep the money here. It's here. A lot of people's idea is they don't want it here. It's already here. All we're doing is losing money to the neighboring cities. All surrounding towns are already wet. Oh, they're, they're booming. And with many businesses closing their doors during the pandemic, money in the city is needed. I think we need all the help we can get right now. John Hamm saying he does not think anything will be different if it goes wet. Because they're going to get it anyway. Any way it goes, they're going to go somewhere and get it. In Middlesbrough, Emily Bennett, WYMT Mountain News. Now the final results are still being counted, but for the in-person voting today in Middlesbrough, 490 people voted yes for alcohol sales and 286 voted no. Now, it's important to note Middlesbrough is already a moist town, meaning uh, sales can be, uh, the alcohol sales are allowed at restaurants. Now, we also had somewhat of a wet, dry vote today in another part of the region. In the Fallsburg precinct of Lawrence County, voters were asked if they approve the sale of alcohol, al alcoholic beverages at wineries. And right now, the yes votes are in the lead in that race. Now this reminder, election results are not final tonight. What you are seeing at the bottom of your screen are in some cases a small percentage of the votes. The final results will not be announced until June 30th, a week from today. But you can find our full election coverage and the results that we do have on WIMT.com or on the WIMT News app. Well, it was kind of a nasty day here in the mountains at times. It got pretty rainy as that cold front pushed through, but then it cleared out pretty nicely. We saw sunshine throughout kind of the majority of the day. We'll go ahead and take you up to that National Weather Service camera in Jackson. We are seeing that mixture of kind of that sun and clouds earlier, but check out how gorgeous that sunset was. We saw lots of pink throughout the mountains. Looking right now into Whitesburg, into downtown, dry and mostly clear skies. Temperatures into those upper 60s those do point into the lower 60s so maybe feeling a little bit on that muggy side out there I know it was muggy earlier when I was out right around dinner time and temperatures still on the warmer side across the area upper 60s to lower 70s cooler and wise at 66 degrees 71 in Jackson and Prestonsburg 70 up into Moorhead and even down into London nice warm 69 if you're looking down into Middlesbrough and parts of Bell County now for tonight We'll see temperatures drop into the lower 60s, a few showers here and there, but I think we'll remain mostly on that drier side. Could see some patchy fog late tonight, early into tomorrow. Then we're going to continue to see a few rain chances for your Wednesday, not a total washout. We'll cool down heading into the next couple of days, and we'll see more sunshine to end out that work week. I'll have a look at that full seven-day forecast coming up in a little bit. All right, thank you, Paige. With positive publicity, the Appalachian School of Luthery in Knott County gained national recognition for its Culture of Recovery program, but was unsure about funding to continue this year. 
But as of this week, the Appalachian Artisan Center has secured a grant for $75,000 to continue the program. WIMT's Lacey Roberts shares why this means so much. I've really, you know, had to sit and think, okay, what am I doing? How am I going to do this? The coronavirus pandemic put a halt not only to businesses and going outside, but for those in the position responsible for funding programs across the country. It resets everything that I've done over the last three years because you go in, you take people to lunch, you drop off packets, you stop in. None of that's you can't do that now. Chris Boyd, director of funding and development for the Appalachian Artisan Center, says despite national attention, funding was scarce. During this COVID time, it's been hard to seek people to donate. Without that funding, we would have to really scale things back. Which to people like instructor Paul Williams says is unacceptable. People who are addicted like that, they need something constructed to do and keep their mind occupied. A cause close to his heart. Unfortunately, uh, two of those, my adopted brothers passed away to uh, drug addiction. So I like helping people out with drug addictions. Knowing firsthand that hands-on activities like Luthery make a difference. I think we, we should have something like this in most every community, I think. Um, there's a need for it. Especially now more than ever. The funding from the NEA will allow us to find those people that have the potential to create their own entrepreneurial jobs. There's such a healing when we're involved with art and I think that during this process people are going to understand the importance of the Appalachian Artisan Center. In Knott County, Lacey Roberts, WYMT Mountain News. The Troublesome Creek String Instrument Company, the only manu manufacturing factory in Knott County, was founded by the Culture Recovery Program. And a fun fact, two out of six Luthers in Eastern Kentucky graduated from the Culture of Recovery Program. Well, the city of Beattyville is honoring their local veterans with banners. The city has 94 banners and has 40 of them hung on light posts throughout downtown on Main Street. The banners have pictures of current and former military members. Under the pictures, it shows which branch of the military they served and the years active. The Main Street director says everyone has enjoyed honoring their loved ones. We got those put up on Main Street and then it just kind of exploded. People were so excited because they look wonderful. I mean, I don't think we've ever displayed any banners that look as good as these. They're patriotic. They're a way to honor people that deserve the honor. Banners are rotated every 30 days to make sure all 94 are shown. Banners can be purchased for $100. You can call 606-464-5007 to order. The City of Hazard announced they will move forward with plans for the 4th of July and other events. City officials met with Scott Lockard from the Health Department to go over plans to hold those events safely. The Freedom Float, a parade, and a fireworks show will still be held on the 4th. The Fish Fry will also happen, but it will be drive through or carry out only. It is also encouraged that families social distance, wear masks, or stay home if they feel sick or have just traveled outside of the area. That doesn't mean that we don't want you there. We want you there. We would love to see you. We miss everybody. Um, but we also want to keep people as safe as possible. The city also still plans to have their North Fork Music Festival July 24th and 25th with additional guidelines as well. The Black Oak Festival is also still on the calendar in September. One East Kentucky partnered with several other groups to conduct a study in 2016 on the workforce in the region. WYMT's Madison Pergram has more on the new steps they are taking to gather more information. EKY Works 2.0. The new workforce study will focus on gathering information on industries in the region or those making its way here. Just being able to show them the data and put it on paper. And so that's what the workforce study allows us to do is to show them real time results of what our, our workforce skill sets look like. The first study understanding the skill sets of coal miners coming out of those mines. That helps inform us what type of industries we should target uh, for recruiting into Eastern Kentucky. Charles Sexton, president of One East Kentucky, says they found miners were immensely skilled, skills that could transfer into many industries. Uh, those that are doing CNC machining, 
welding, that type of work. Um, and those are two industries that are very strong in the state of Kentucky. The new study providing two surveys to both employers and people in the area. One, we want to hear from those employers who have hired former coal miners to see what their satisfaction rate is and also understand how easily they, they did transition into these new roles. Adding a component involving college and high school students to get an idea of what the future might look like. We want to know what their thought process is on employment, career paths, uh, what their probability of staying in the region is what their uh, focus is for education. As they try and prepare Eastern Kentuckians for a prosperous future and what could lie ahead. Madison Pergram, WYMT Mountain News. The information gathering process was supposed to take four months but will take longer because of COVID-19. People have nearly three weeks left to fill out the survey and you can find the link to do that on our website at WYMT. Dot com. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, coronavirus cases have dr drastically increased in parts of the U.S. in recent weeks. Find out how U.S. leaders are reacting. We'll see a few more rain chances as we head into your Wednesday, but we'll end out the week with some sunshine. I'll have a look at that seven-day forecast coming up.